Uh, as you know, Daikin has been the pioneer with its R32 technology in the market. Our blue evolution journey with our customers has started a long time ago. Ciao, and welcome to our fifth episode of Applied Talks. We took a short break this summer for vacations and hope you were all able to take some time to spend with family and friends. While I'm sure most folks were lounging on a beach or near a pool, our marketing department was working hard on this episode of Applied Talks. As you may recall, in the last episode, we had the chance to talk about R32 technology. Luca Del Ferraro educated us on the advantages that this pure and environmentally friendly refrigerant can ensure and the engineering challenges he and his team were able to overcome bringing it into the Daikin product portfolio. In this episode, we'll continue that discussion about R32 advantages. However, this time it will be in relation to one of the most recent and important product launches by Daikin Applied, the new R32 heat pump. The EWYTB. The EWYTB completes the Daikin Blue Evolution series for the applied product portfolio and is the first heat pump in this segment to be required and equipped with R32 refrigerant. This product stands out for having the lowest level of direct and indirect CO2 emissions, thanks to the low global warming potential of R32, but also thanks to the high level of efficiencies it offers, the highest the market can offer in both cooling and heating mode. Enough for me though. It's time I introduce today's guest, Mert Donlison. Mert is currently serving as Daikin's Strategic Product Management Supervisor for Daikin Central Europe, which is a particularly interesting market for heat pumps, a market that seems to appreciate the new R32 heat pump series very much. So Mert, welcome and how are you doing today? Thank you, Hugh. I'm doing well. Uh, I did take some time off to spend with family, and it was a very welcome surprise to come back actually to work and find the invite to this episode of Applied Talks, episode five. And thank you especially for the opportunity for the invitation to talk about the new diet in our to do heat pump. Well, we are certainly happy to have you here. Uh, and I know in our chat before this episode, you had mentioned how how much work you had coming back from the holiday, but so excited to be part of this episode that you made some personal sacrifices to get this into your schedule. For that, we are certainly grateful. And I'm sure our viewers are gonna be grateful as well. Uh, so let's get, let's get started. Uh, the response from the market in these first few months after the launch of the new R32 heat pump, how do you think the market is reacting so far to this new launch? Uh, well, uh, we have launched the product in two phases in Central Europe. Uh, first, we introduced the small to medium capacity classes from 70 to 400 kilowatts. And this covers actually majority of our targeted uh, applications in the market. In addition to that, in May 2020, we enlarged the range up to 670 kilowatts, completing the full portfolio. Uh, as you know, Daikin has been the pioneer with its R32 technology in the market. Our blue evolution journey with our customers has started a long time ago. Uh, this started with our small DX equipment. However, uh, this created big expectations from the customer side to have this refrigerant technology also available for the larger capacities. Our customers were already expecting our 32 based solutions for commercial applications. And again, as you know, previous year uh, with the launch of the R32 Chile, uh, we had a big success in our market. However, we were lacking the heat pump solution with R32 which relates approximately 30% of our air cooled chillers in our Central European market. And customers had this expectation at the very beginning when they witnessed the sales launch of the Daikin's R32 chiller lineup. And today, I'm proud to say that we kept our promise and introduced the first R32 based heat pump in the market, meeting our customers' expectations in very short time. And now we are one step closer to complete Daikin's full R32 lineup, which is very important to provide total solution with R32 towards our customer network. That's fantastic. So next question, how do, you, do your customers accept this change? And what about the other refrigerants with low GWP used within scroll compressor technology? 
Well, actually, all the customers in our market are already very much familiar with R32, thanks to our long existing DX portfolio with R32 refrigerant. It's very rare nowadays that we face questions about R32. But although rare, uh, we are asked about the categorization of R32 and if it brings any additional constraints uh, during the project design phase. As you know, R32 refrigerant uh, is an A2L refrigerant, uh, which means it's mildly flammable compared to A1 refrigerant such as uh, R14A. Uh, however, uh, this doesn't really bring any additional constraints in the project as our air-cooled R32 chillers or heat pumps are installed at open air, such as on the roof. Uh, in other words, no refrigerant flows inside the building. Therefore, no safety measures needed to be taken. Uh, in short, uh, we have almost full shift from R30, R14A uh, to R32 refrigerant in our sales, and we expect this trend to continue uh, in the upcoming years. Uh, regarding your second question, uh, the other low GWP refrigerants in the market, which can also be used with the scroll compressor technology, uh, well, we are aware that there are such refrigerants, uh, for example, R454B or R452B. However, R32 refrigerant is clearly the best refrigerant among all these because of the refrigerant characteristics. And as Daikin, we were always aware that both these refrigerants, R454B and 452B may be used as simple drop-in solution without redesigning the chiller. So using these refrigerants would have allowed us much lower investment costs and shorter time to go to market. Hmm. However, uh, for Daikin's R32 heat pump, uh, the compressor had to be redesigned completely, but this gave the customers the benefit of higher energy efficiency, roughly around 10%. Also giving peace of mind to the customers regarding the refrigerant availability, and more stable and lower refrigerant prices. Very impressive. So how do you think this new range is meeting the needs of clients and projects? Well, CE market is very diverse. It consists of 16 different countries for Daikin. Uh, these are markets with customers who are, uh, there are customers uh, who are very sensitive about the low GWP and environmentally friendly products, such as our key accounts mainly. Uh, whereas there are markets with customers who are only looking for budget solutions. And we have many markets where the efficiency plays an important role, minimizing the running costs. Therefore, we needed a solution which can meet all of our market needs in Central Europe. So low GWP, high efficiency, and price competitiveness. The R32 heat pump addresses exactly all these points. For the projects with environmental concerns, as mentioned before, our customers can now enjoy the R32 refrigerant on these high capacity ranges with the heat pump technology. Uh, next to this, the R32 heat pump comes with two efficiency versions, silver and gold efficiency. And for the projects where the running costs are the top concern, uh, we can easily offer the most efficient unit in the market, the gold series. And if the price competitiveness is, is needed, uh, we can always offer the silver version with standard efficiency levels. Uh, last but not least, uh, it's very important to highlight actually, during the period of COVID-19, it became more and more important to remotely control and monitor and perform diagnostic analysis and service activities on the HVAC equipment. Uh, in Central Europe, uh, we deliver all our R32, R32 heat pumps about 200 kilowatts with Daikin on site technology on board for one year free of charge, meaning that heat pump is live on cloud. And this allows service engineers to remotely access the equipment and take preventive actions if needed without even visiting the site, while giving also the customer the opportunity to see live data, such as the energy efficiency performance of the equipment. That is very impressive. I know COVID-19 has impacted many aspects of our lives, but I see you handle it well. So what are the applications where you see this new product used the most? Uh, thanks to the very wide operating envelope, uh, the R32 chiller and the heat pump can cover the brine applications, for example, food storage applications, going through traditional comfort cooling up to process cooling or data center applications. Uh, speaking about R32 heat pumps specifically, uh, we see it's becoming a perfect solution, especially for hotels, 
thanks to the new compressors, extended operating envelope. Now it's possible to have continuous heating operation, for example, 60 degrees uh, condenser leaving water temperature at 35 degrees ambient temperature. This is, of course, crucial to serve for the hot water needs of the hotels during the summer period. Uh, again, uh, another thing, the, thanks to the extended operating envelope for the comp uh, of the compressor, our R33 heat pump is now a perfect energy source for collective housing applications. Uh, now, Daikin can provide apartment buildings with sustainable energy efficient heating uh, by combining Daikin's new R32 heat pump as centralized energy source. And next to that, Daikin's Alterma technology as the indoor unit per flat, providing heating, cooling, domestic hot water needs of the building. Other than that, uh, we have already installed ref uh, many units. So we have references being retail shops, offices also hospitals and industrial applications as well. We've said this new range uh, stands out for the low GWP, thanks to R32 refrigerant, of course, but also for the very high efficiency levels offered. Does that help in any way meeting the requirements established by regulations or maybe allows clients to get access to special incentives in the different countries you work with? Well, uh, again, Central European market is a fast evolving market. As I said, 16 countries we are looking after. And still, uh, we expect more and more incentives in this area in the future, incentivizing green buildings and environmental friendly solutions and sustainable solutions. Uh, at this moment, we have uh, two active public subsidies from the government. Uh, one is the EcoSlot incentive from Slovenian government and another one is from Croatia, Croatian Environmental uh, and Energy Efficiency Fund. Uh, both these funds are linked to certain minimum efficiency criteria, whether in terms of seasonal efficiency or nominal efficiency. And in both cases, we are striving to meet these requirements. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, Mert, I wanna thank you again for being with us today. I'm so happy you made this episode, given your hectic schedule this week. Well, thank you uh, for having me in this episode, actually. It was very nice for me. I'm already looking forward to watch the next episode uh, with other uh, topics as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, that wraps up today's episode. I certainly hope our viewers enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, thank you again, Mert. And again, thanks to our team in Italy who continue to put in the hours to make these episodes possible. They do a tremendous job. And thanks again to our viewers for tuning in. We always hope you enjoy the content. From all of us at Daikin Applied Europe, stay safe and stay healthy. Oh.